Hi everyone, today we're talking about inventory costing. We're going to be focusing on the first in first out or FIFO method under a perpetual system. And I'm your instructor Brandy. Under a perpetual method, when we're talking about inventory costing, we're talking about when we make a sale to a customer. When we make that sale, we're going to make two journal entries. Our first journal entry was to record the sale. So let's pretend we sold $10,000 worth of goods to a customer. We would record that sale by debiting accounts receivable or cash and crediting sales revenue for $10,000. We would make a second journal entry under the perpetual system, which would record our cost of goods sold and take our inventory out of our warehouse. And Generally, up until this point, we have been given the numbers. When we were given a question, we were told our cost of goods sold is X amount of dollars. What we're doing in inventory costing is we are calculating what this cost of goods sold is actually to the company. That's the whole purpose of this video. The first in, first out method means that whatever we buy first, we have to sell first. So let's go into an example and see how this works. In all the videos you're going to be watching, we're going to use the same set of data. So you may want to stop here and take a moment and copy this down because you're going to be using it four different times. So just taking a quick look at what's happening in our data set, it's telling us the story. We're starting January with 500 units, which costs us $5 per unit. Then we bought 750 units for $7. We sold 650 units. We made a purchase of 400 units for $4. We made another purchase for 300 units at $6 a unit and to end January we sold 700 units. As I said under the perpetual method whenever we make a sale we're trying to figure out our cost of goods sold. So we're going to be figuring out our cost of goods sold for this transaction, the sale on January 13th and the sale on January 30th. And I'm just going to make a note at the top of my page that we are under the first in first out or FIFO method. So in order to do my calculations and figure out how much my cost of goods sold is at each of my transaction dates, I'm going to make a table to make my calculations. And a lot of the information is going to be duplicated from the table that we already have. I have an area for my dates, my descriptions, my inventory, and my cost of goods sold. So now each item from the table, I'm going to go through sequentially and decide, is it going into my inventory or is it going into my cost of goods sold? On January 1st, our beginning inventory, it hasn't been sold yet. So we're going to put that in our inventory column. So I'm just going to go through and fill out my data. And I'm going to do this in a variety of colors just so you can see how the inventory is flowing. And when I'm done with putting my transaction into my table, I'm just going to check it off, signifying to myself that I don't need to deal with this anymore. I'm all finished. I can go down the next item on my table, the January 7th purchase, and put that in. When I buy something, it goes into my warehouse until I sell it to a customer. 750 units at $7 per unit goes into my inventory. And I'm going to go up to my table and check off my 750, telling myself I've dealt with this item. I don't have to worry about it anymore. The next item is a sale. And as you recall, we're actually trying to calculate our cost of goods sold when we make a sale under the perpetual method. I like to to draw a line across my page and this signifies to me that I'm going to update my inventory after this point. So on January 13th we are making a sale and we're selling 650 units. So we're having to take 650 units out of our inventory and it's going out to our customer and that will become cost of goods sold for our accounting records. Remember under the first in first out method whatever we buy first we have to sell first. So of course we bought the January 1st units, the beginning inventory, before we purchased our January 7th items. So for our cost of goods sold, the entire January 1st amount of 500 units can be put in. And that leaves me with nothing left in my inventory at the $5. For my cost of goods sold, I haven't hit my 650 units yet. I only have 500 units there. So from the 750, I'm going to take 150 into my cost of goods sold and the balance of 600 is going to remain in my inventory. I'm doing a quick check. I've sold 650 units and my total cost of goods sold on that sale is $3,550. So if I was doing my journal entry now for to record that sale, I would say debit to accounts receivable and credit to sales revenue for the amount of the sale. It's not given to us here. And then our second journal entry debit to cost of goods sold and credit to inventory. We're taking it out of inventory for $3,550. 
So now let's continue on with our example. We've dealt with our sales, so we can check that off. And the next thing that's happening is we're making another purchase. We can add that again into our inventory. And once we've dealt with that transaction, we can check it off. On January 27th, we are making another purchase, and that is going to be for 300 units at $6 a unit. I'm done with that transaction, so I'm going to check it off. The next thing that's happening is I'm making another sale. So again, I'm going to draw a line across my page indicating to me that we're about to update our inventory numbers. So on January 30th, we are making a sale and we're selling 700 units. So let's just take a look at what we have sitting in our inventory right now. We have 600 units at $7. We have 400 units at $4. And we have 300 units at $6. We're under the FIFO method, which means whatever we purchase first, we have to sell first. The items that we purchased first are at the top. So we're gonna start clearing out these 600 units and take as many as we need. We have 700 units that we're selling and this top inventory amount of 600 unit doesn't cover the full 700. So we have zero left in inventory from that purchase. We're now gonna have to take the additional amount from the next purchase we had made. So we had 700 total sale. We've accounted for 600 of it. So we're going to have to take 100 units from the next purchase, which leaves us with 300 units still in inventory to sell at a later date. We haven't sold any of the 300 units that were purchased on January 27th, so those are all going to remain in our inventory account. I'm going to do a quick check that our total cost of goods sold is for a total of 700 units, which is what our sale was for, and our total cost was $4,600. So again, if I was making a journal entry for this transaction, for my sale, I would debit accounts receivable, credit sales revenue for the total amount that we were charging the customer, and then I would make my second journal entry, debiting cost of goods sold and crediting inventory for this $4,600. If you're trying to find out what's left in inventory at the end of the month, what we could do is we could total our 300 times $4 per unit plus our 300 unit at $6 a unit. So we have 600 units sitting in inventory and their total cost would be $3,000. And that's the amount that would show up on the balance sheet under our inventory account. If we were trying to find out the total cost of goods sold for the month, we would take our cost of goods sold from our sale on the 13th of January, and we would add it to the cost of goods sold from the sale on January 30th. So our total cost of goods sold for January is $8,150. That's the number that would show up on your income statement. So now that you've watched this video, you should know how to calculate cost of goods sold, do the journal entries for cost of goods sold, and calculate ending inventory under a FIFO perpetual method. Thanks for watching everyone.